In my last video, I put out the question, can uh, these small and large language models count the number of R's in strawberry? And whilst it's a pretty popular video, a lot of people in the comments didn't love me challenging a local large language model to this task, only because they firmly believe that's just not how tokenizing works. You know, it's just even if we had AGI, we shouldn't we shouldn't be asking these things to count. Um, and then my mind kind of went into the idea of, well, look, it's a silly example, but what if there is a need for some sort of handoff to a function or a program? Can I consistently get a smaller local large language model to output um, you know the, the key parameters, the key values I need out of a, of, out of a text uh, to pass over to a function to get the answer, um, and how useful, how can we go about doing that? So to get started, we're in we're in Python, and the first thing we kind of want to do is we have a you know we have a word, uh, and let's say it's a uh, you know strawberry, okay, and we want to count a letter, and let's just say the letter is equal to R, alrighty. And what I can say is something as simple as word.count, and I can pass in what we want to count. And what we want to count is the letter, and the letter is R, uh, and we get three. Now, if that was a capital, oh, capital E, if that was a capital R, okay, it'll be zero. So we've got a couple of options there. One of the quick and easy ways is to sort of do a dot two lower and then a dot two lower on the letter as well. So we're basically converting them both to a lowercase. That could be uppercase, doesn't really matter. But if you now do a count, it just sort of works every time. So thinking about this, if a user does prompt with that question, how do we get the word and the letter consistently out of the yeah, local large language model. So a couple of different ways to do that, but today we are gonna be using, once again, Olama, one of the one of my favorites. Um, so if you haven't got any Olama installed, give it a download. It's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Once you've got Olama installed, head over to Models. Today, we can use DeepSeek. Um, it, it does a lot of thinking. It does a lot of text generation. It doesn't run that well on my Mac, um, MacBook, Air M2 with 24 gigs of RAM. Uh, it is the latest and greatest and everyone's loving it. But but to be honest, um, I have a soft spot for my, my llamas. I think they're, yeah, they're, they're really good models. So today we're going to be using Llama 3.2 because it is one of the smaller models, 3.3 uh, billion parameters. Uh, and so if you want to install that, all you got to do is run this command here in your command prompt or your terminal. And that's going to go ahead and download and make sure that model is good to go. Next thing you want to do is jump over to PyPy, make sure you pip install Olama. If this is all new to you, let me know, drop a comment. I'll make a video that goes into a bit more detail. And I have got other videos on my channel that go through this. But once you get Python installed, yeah, install Olama. I like this page because it gives me some boilerplate code to get started. So grab that one. And what we're going to do is we're going to paste that in here. And what I might even do is I might even, just while we're here, I might even define a function called count letters okay and that function is going to require a word and a letter righty oh and if we just do that then we can just return um return this one and so the way that's going to work is if i have count letters i can pass in say adam and i can ask for the letter we'll say a and it's going to come back with two a's okay now where are we we've got some boilerplate code but let's quickly talk through this we've got a response we've got our um We've got our model, so 3.2. And if you're unsure what that model is, jump over to our Llama. It's Llama 3.2, 3 billion parameter model. Uh, I've got some messages. So the user message here, this one might be as simple as, now what are we trying to do? So uh, we are trying to, it's kind of funny, it's a bit of a meta prompt because the prompt would be how many R's in strawberry, but this sort of prompt, this thing would sort of sit in between and just validate and just ask the question, what is what is the prompt about or you know and if we were to figure out that it was about counting letters then we can extract the word um and so we can say something like the following text is about counting uh letters in a word extract the word and the letter okay and we might give ourselves a bit more space in fact we might even take this and create our own little variable called prompt okay which will be just a bit easier so we call this one prompt and prompt is going to be equal to again give ourselves a bit more space so three little three little uh, guys there and let's go ahead and we probably don't need a big space at the start the following text is about counting letters in a word extract the word and the letter okay 
Um, so we'll say text and that'll be whatever the user sort of questions about a word. So how many R's, how many R's? See now look what I've done. I'm going to have to use double here, double quotes because I'm using singles there. And this is going to get a bit funky. How many R's in strawberry? And then the output, so the JSON is going to be Alrighty, and that's going to say something like word, and that's a string, and then a letter, and that's a string. So let's see how it goes. We're going to pass that prompt in. Oh, I put test instead of text. All right, so uh, word, letter, not bad. Um, what we might even do, only valid JSON responses <laughs> allowed. Okay, give that a go. And even then it's really not doing it. So what we need to do is we actually need to sort of enforce the, the JSON format, alrighty? So to do that, what we're gonna do is let's get rid of this, shift enter one more time, you know, from the given text, strawberry and R. So it's actually pretty good at identifying the uh, letters, but it's not giving us a consistent um, structure that we can pass into our function called count letters. So we're not gonna be able to get the word out of there and we're not gonna be able to get the letter. So. To do that, what we're actually going to be using is we're going to be using um, a feature within Olama, which allows us to define a format. And that particular format is a JSON schema. And we're going to actually derive that JSON schema from Pydantic. So if you're not familiar with Pydantic, Pydantic is a way um, that lets you define sort of schemas and it's used heavily in API interactions, but I'll show you how it sort of works. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to give ourselves a bit more space um, and we're a bit all over the place here. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a bit more space. And we're, first of all, we are going to import um, from Pydantic, we're going to import base model. Okay, so from uh, Pydantic, import and it's capital B atom base and it's capital M model alrighty and then we're going to do is we are going to use a class now classes in Python can be a bit bit tricky for beginners a bit confusing but in this example they're actually really straightforward because they're only going to have literally two two properties um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say class and we're going to call this one um, what is it count, you know, count letters right that's our that's our class. And because we're using a class, we've even, we've made this one look a bit better. So count letters, uh, and we'll do a capital C there. So count letters, and that's going to, we're, we're going to import base model. Alrighty. Now, next thing we're going to do is a couple of very basic things. We are going to define two attributes or properties on that class. So the first one is going to be word and the word is a string. And then the second one is the letter and the letter is a, not a letter, the letter is a string. Okay, shift enter on that. And now we have this one here. Now what's interesting about this is we can then say something like count letters that actually has a um, has a method which is called, um, how is it, model JSON schema, okay? And what this is doing is it's generating um, a JSON schema which uh, has been sort of trained into these models, um, which allows us to get really good at having an output matching to the schema. So it's telling, it's basically saying, oh, here's the properties, and this is what we're gonna be passing into Olama as a format. So how that actually works is actually not that tricky. So I'm gonna scroll down here, and where we have basically our chat, we're gonna add, we've got model, we've got messages, and we're just gonna add one more in. We're gonna add in something called, give ourselves a bit more space, something called format, okay? I'm gonna scroll down. And format, all that's going to do is that is going to be our, this one here. So count letters dot, um, count letters dot model JSON schema. So format is equal to count letters model JSON schema. Now, if I shift enter on that and give ourselves a bit more space, what you'll notice is it's very quickly given us a very nice JSON payload, which is really nice. And this is really um, consistent. So if I shift enter again, you'll notice again, perfectly. And if I say for I in range, right? And I run this say 10 times, my expectation is all 10 times, I will get a valid JSON object. Here we go. How nice is that? That one's formatted slightly differently, but that is still valid. Now, if you weren't sure if it is valid or not, there is a model validate JSON. And what that does is it's very similar to how we did, where are we? How we did 
count letters dot model JSON schema, we can actually do a validation step. So what we can do is we can say something like count letters dot, and then we can do model underscore validate underscore <laughs> JSON. Okay. And we'll just pass in this JSON here, which is this one here. And what that's going to do is if we say, well, let's put the brakes on and let's have a look at what that actually produces. Okay. So then, well, then we'll say, um, count letters oops where are we count letters response shift enter on that and if we have a look at that one what we now have is we have a count letters and we can actually say something like give me the dot word which is fantastic because this is all coming from our pydantic and give me dot letter right and what's really cool about that is now when we go back to what we built earlier which was a very simple function here I can now say count letters and I can pass in our word and I can pass in our letter and that's going to come back with an answer of three. And then what I could say, <laughs> what I can say is something like, we'll say count of letters, that's a bit better, give ourselves a bit more space. And now what I can say, I don't even need to pass this back to a, a, a large language model. I can now quite comfortably with an F string say there are count of letters uh, and then pass it th yeah, three and then pass in the letter uh, letter in and then pass in the word okay uh, and now I can say there are three R's three R's three R's in strawberry I could do some smarts around if there's no R's and all that sort of stuff and to really test this what I can do is how many we'll say how many A's in Adam. Okay, we'll see how it goes with that one. Enter, shift, enter, and that's going to give us the word and the response. And then what I need to do is say there are count of letters. And so what I need to do is make sure I use the actual outputs from Pydantic. So I've got the word here, which is this one here, and I've got the letter. So we do that one there, shift, enter, and there are two A's in Adam. And we'll just do a quick final test. We will say, how many, how many B's in Bill? Okay, shift enter, shift enter, shift enter. It's perfectly, again, it's done, you know, the word, the letter, and there there are one B's in Bill, and obviously I can clean it up a little bit. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That's looking really nice. Before we wrap up, there's, there's, quite a, there's been quite a bit to take in here, but the, the key takeaways are, are this. When you're presented with messy unstructured data or a question that comes through in text, small local large language models can be a fantastic way to extract structured information that can then go be passed off to do something else. I've seen people say, oh, these things should be AGI. They should be able to do everything. I don't believe that. I think LLMs play a 10 to 15% role in a lot of the work that I do. When I'm sort of automating and orchestrating data, Localized language models being able to extract that value into a structured format consistently and then being able to use that in other parts of my process are really valuable to me. And if this has been at all valuable to you, please give that subscribe button a click. I would really appreciate that. Helps grow the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.